Take it on the chin, guys. Yeah, that was supposed to be last week. That's right. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, even Mother Nature didn't help you escape that one, right? Chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Three strong imperatives for fellas. Three strong imperatives. Number one, live with your wife. Live with your wife. Uh, it is a compound word uh, uh, composed of the word soon, which means with, Max, it's prefix, okay? Soon and oikeo, which means to dwell or to abide. Uh, put together, it means to dwell together. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I currently live with my wife. Uh, of course I live with her. I'm married to her. Um, that's not necessarily what Peter's talking about. I heard Swindoll tell a story this week <laughs> of... Uh, the, the devil appeared in church and scared everybody off except this one old guy who was sitting in the front row. And the devil came up to him and said, well, don't you know who I am? He said, yep, I know who you are. I'm the devil. Yes, I, I know you're the devil. Well, aren't you afraid of me? Well, no, I'm not afraid of you. Well, how come you're not afraid of me? Well, because I've been married to your sister for 42 years. <laughs> Cliff said it. I didn't, Mary. Never mind. <laughs> not at all. I would never do that. Mary, I would never do that. No. That is not what Peter is talking about here. Fortunately. Fortunately. Uh, he is talking about a close togetherness. Sun oikeo suggests more than just living under the same roof. That's not what he's talking about. Uh, we're not talking about being roommates with someone. Uh, there is a depth. There is a sense of intimacy uh, in the word. And he's saying that husbands are responsible for that in the relationship. They are uh, to be doing much, much more than just providing a good living uh, and uh, uh, providing for that and paying the bills and all that kind of stuff. That is not a substitute for sharing deeply in life. Uh, a husband is supposed to be at home with his wife. If you want to carry the analogy, it means uh, understanding every room in her heart, so to speak, uh, and being sensitive to her needs, dwelling together. It definitely means more than just eating at the same table. Definitely means more than just uh, financing the same mortgage definitely means more uh, than just uh, sharing the same bedroom. So first and foremost, live with your wife. The second imperative is to know your wife. To know your wife. Uh, and Peter exhorts husbands to live with their wives, he says, how? What's it say? Huh? Well, 
live with your wife in what? In an understanding way. Hmm. It literally means according to knowledge. Uh, and we're not talking about academics. It implies uh, a thorough understanding of how our wives are put together. And you may say, well, listen, I know my wife. I know my wife, okay? Brown hair, blue eyes, five foot two, weighs so much, blue's her favorite color, da 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 I know where she likes to go for dinner. If you know that, I mean, you've really got it made. Because every time I ask, she never knows. Where do you want to go? Oh, I don't know. Am I getting too sensitive there, Cliff? I know you have. <laughs> but anybody can know those type of things. That's not what he's talking about. She is a unique vessel. She is crafted, beautifully interwoven by the Creator. And to know your wife means that you know the answers to those questions complex questions about her. Um, what is her innermost makeup? Uh, what are her deepest concerns and fears? How do you help her work through those things in the safety and security of your love and your relationship? What does she need from you? Guess what, guys? She doesn't always need us to fix it. Now, that's our knee-jerk response because we are hot-wired by God to be doers and fixers, right? It's simple. She tells you this, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and bing, immediately you've got the fix. And you would think that she would get on the ground and worship you because you have the fix. It's so simple. It's logical. But that's not what she wants. I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to what, ladies? Listen to me. Just listen to me. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. One of my favorite, favorite commercials is the little cheese nibs commercial, where the guy is sitting on the couch, he's watching a ball game, and he's eating a box of cheese nibs. His wife comes through the door, comes around the couch, stands right in front of him, between him and the TV screen, and she just begins to vent all kinds of stuff. And he just sits there and looks at her very quietly. And when she takes a breath, he says, it sounds to me like you've had a very difficult day. And she just reaches down and plants a big old wet kiss on him. And then she goes off into the kitchen humming and singing to herself. And he goes back to eating the cheese nibs and just goes, <laughs> There's a lot that's being said in that silly little commercial. He didn't try and fix it. He didn't try and deny it. He didn't try and minimize it. He listened and he validated. Now, of course, the commercial implied that he just made her go away and he got to continue with what it is that he was doing, you know, and maybe that's what happens, but not all the time. Sometimes it's just a matter of I need someone to listen, especially if what you've been doing all day is talking to little people, right? We remember how those days uh, were, uh, and uh, sometimes you just need uh, adult talk and uh, so forth. Yeah, don't be the Archie Bunker type. Yeah, Edith, where's my beer and how soon before dinner? Right. No, that's not, that's not it. What does she need from you? Why does she respond the way that she does? Do we know those things? You know, there's no handbook for that. There isn't. There's no handbook for that. Uh, uh, you know, even, even your father-in-law can't tell you the answer to those type of things, right? It's, we have to find it out in the intimacy of marriage and in the process of cultivating and doing life 
together. And it takes time, and it takes listening, and it takes paying attention, and concentrating, and praying for insight, and asking for understanding. Most wives long for that. Some of them die longing for it. Few things give a woman more security than knowing that her husband really knows her. That is the result of true intimacy. That's what turns romance into a lifelong love. I remember in our first church, we had an old couple. I mean, they were old. They were both in their 90s. Oldest couple I ever baptized. They were in their 90s. And uh, uh, they were... They were just little sweethearts all the time. You know, they'd, they'd come to church together and, um, you know, he would always hold the door for her and they'd hold hands as they walked into church and as they sat there, they'd hold hands and uh, they were just so cute together. And you could just see that they were, uh, they just acted like a couple of school kids. Uh, and uh, what was the conversation? There was this one conversation that we were having, and I think I had just asked them something about what's the secret to, you know, so many years and all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, I, I forget what the, the final response was. But I remember in one, one occasion, uh, we were talking about um, how... Oh, I know, I know what it was. They, they talked about how that uh, when, they were, when they were young and when they were first married, and they got married very young, um, uh, they were poor. They didn't have two nickels to rub together. And so um, they, uh, they found a place to rent an upstairs area above the grocery store. And... Uh, um, the floors needed to be redone. They were wood floors, and they hadn't been done. So he sanded the floors, you know. And then they couldn't uh, they couldn't rent a buffer to polish the floors after they had varnished them. So what he did was he he got a great big uh, 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 towel and tied it around her rear end, and then he grabbed her by the ankles and swung her all around and they laughed and they giggled and as they're telling this story they're laughing and they're giggling and they're just having as much fun as when they were young and just two young kids in love they didn't have two nickels to rub together and that's one of the things they did for fun and spontaneity and uh, you know it was just such a sweet sweet thing to just see them beam as they're telling this story, which, you know, we're looking at that, we're saying, who would do such a thing? They did, and they loved it. And uh, talked about how, you know, and, sh and she said, and then we got, we got old and wrinkled because all we did was play out in the sun and all this kind of stuff. And he looks at her and he says, yeah, but we looked so good. And uh, they were just very, very much in love and uh, despite the age the youth of that love was uh, was still there um, there is an interesting phrase here that we need to address um, that causes uh, some hackles to go up from time to time um, showing honor it says here uh, as a weaker vessel hmm who wants to tackle that one? Spoken by a woman. I didn't say that. But yes, she said, uh, it's talking about the physical, obviously. And that's true. That is exactly what it's talking about.
This has nothing to do with weakness of character or weakness of intelligence. By far and large, we know a number of ladies, don't we, all of us, if we think about it long enough, who have much stronger character and are much more knowledgeable in certain subjects than a lot of fellows. Uh, ladies are much more given to detail than us guys are. Um, this whole idea of weaker vessel uh, simply means that she has less physical strength. And the husband has to recognize that difference and take that difference into account. That doesn't mean that she's, I mean, I had an uncle. I had an uncle who was just a, a, a dirty, rotten scoundrel, mean, nasty guy. And his wife, my aunt, uh, was was pretty much like a hired hand. I mean, he treated her like uh, like a, a boy. Um, she went out and she got in the firewood. She went out and she mucked out the stalls. She did it all while he sat inside and smoked himself into an early grave. Uh, and it, it was an awful thing, terrible thing. You know, he did not treat her well at all. Always talked down about her, and it was uh, it was not a not a good thing, not a good thing. Um, I think about this whole weaker vessel thing with respect to the debate about trans sports, trans athletes, right? Um, why is it that um, the gals are, are having such a fit about? Guys who want to pretend to be girls um, playing on girls' sports teams and taking the trophies all away. I mean, it's ridiculous. You, you look at the podium when it's all done and they're giving out the awards, and there's a guy who's head and shoulders taller than anybody else, broad-shouldered. You know, I don't care if he's dressed in a girl's bathing suit or not. He looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and he's proud of the fact that he won first place. Well, yeah, you're swimming against a bunch of girls. And that's not to say anything bad about the girls. It's just to realize and to admit the fact that physically there are differences. Now, does that mean that girls are wimps? Absolutely not. Guys, try and have a baby. Mm. Okay? Uh my goodness, you know, when, 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 when ladies say that they want to do <clears throat> natural childbirth, you know, which means no drugs, Ooh. wow, I mean, personally, I've never tried to do natural tooth extractions without Novocaine, you know, um, my goodness, natural root canals, natural appendectomies, natural, no. But wow, you know, more power to them. But there is this difference. There is this physical difference. You line up a hundred guys on one side and a hundred gals on the other side and you put them in a tug of war, the guys are going to win every time. Why? Because there is a difference. The muscles are different. The muscle tone is different. God made us different. That's the whole idea of the weaker vessel. It's not to be seen as a negative. It's to be seen as a difference, a uniqueness. And there's no guy athlete, male athlete, whatever you want to call it, that ought to be proud of themselves for pretending to be a girl. Ah. You know, I, I hope that that battle never, never gets won for the guys. What does this all mean? Well, it, it has nothing to do with us proving to be how strong we are, proving to be how macho we are. That's not it at all. Um, 
we need to love our wives, we need to listen to them, we need to adapt to their needs, and we need to say no to more work so that we can say yes to being more at home, so that we can say yes to the needs of our families. How else are our kids and our grandkids going to ever learn what it means to be a husband and a father if they don't see us there? Now, again, beware of extremism. Obviously, we're talking commonsensical things here. We're not suggesting that there needs to be some smothering kind of attention where that you're out in a rowboat and Fabio is giving you the ride and speaking nothing but sweet, sweet nothings to you. Right? Come on. You know? I mean, now who's dreaming? <laughs> you know? That's another commercial that's a great one. Fabio's out there, and, and Fabio's rowing the boat, and he's shirtless. He's got that long, flowing hair, and there's the romantic music playing in the background, and he's saying wonderful things, you know, and she's just kind of, ah, you know, and then she snaps back to reality, and there's this little nerdy guy, and he simply says, you smell good. You look really nice today. Okay. Well, there's all of that. Uh, it, it means being able to love your wife in such a way that she can't come back to you fast enough when you've been apart. Aww. Isn't that special? Right, honey? There's a third thing. It tells us to honor our wives. To honor our wives. To grant her honor. It means to assign her a place of honor. And I find it very interesting that the word honor here in verse 7 is the same word that is used in chapter 1 and verse 19 when it describes the blood of Jesus as being precious. That's a significant analogy, wouldn't you say? Uh, to honor something. Um, the greater the cost, the greater the gift, uh, the more you honor that item. It's not only used of a treasure, it's also used of someone who occupies a higher uh, a respected position in our lives, someone who's higher on our list of priorities. That's how we are to treat our wives, to honor them by giving them a, a priority on our relationships and in our schedules and most importantly in our hearts. Question for all of us, fellas. Um, how do we treat our wives on an average day? Do we honor her? Do we give her a place of significance? Do we allow her to realize, does she know that she is top priority? Now, it's easy for us to say, well, she should know all those things. Of course those things are true. doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. You know, there's always room for all of us to grow in those areas. I mean, myself included. One of my faux pas is I tend to be so engrossed in what it is that I'm doing that whenever Sue will call, I'm kind of like, yeah? She's like, yeah? Yeah? Well, I can see that it's you, and I know that it's you, so what do you want? Doesn't always go over real good. So every once in a while, I need a refresher training. Um, but there's also something else that is here. There is... Um, 
it, it, it's, it's crucial as we think of these two parts. You know, wives, he says, you need to focus on your actions and your adornment and your attitudes and your attention. That's important. Husbands, you need to live with your wife. You need to know her. You need to honor her. Uh, and, and, and that's great. But the seal of all of this, he says uh, at the end of verse 7, is that so that your prayers may not be hindered. You feel like your prayers are not passing the ceiling sometimes? Feel like God's not listening? We need to go back and see what's going on in our relationship with our spouse. Um, because if we're going to evaluate uh, uh, and cultivate an effective prayer life, um, the secret to that is our relationship with each other. And if our relationship is uh, out of sync, then our prayer life is going to be out of sync. That's what Peter's saying here. You know? Heirs with you of the grace of life. That kind of puts it on an even playing field, doesn't it? Heirs with you. Not heirs of you, but heirs with you. Of the grace of life. So that your prayers may not be hindered. So, here's something to work on this week. Get together with your spouse and um, do not allow this, do not allow this exercise to become a uh, bone of contention or a place of arguing. Don't. Let this be something that is constructive and and. Um, encouraging but get together with your spouse and share with him or her four things that you appreciate about them and then share one thing that you would like to improve about yourself with respect to your relationship Now, don't do it the other way around and share four things you'd like to see them change and one thing you like about yourself. No. Four things that you appreciate about them and one thing that you would like to change about yourself with respect to your relationship. And just kind of have that discussion. Just have some fun with that. Again, don't, I mean, if it's going to, if it's going to breed issues, then don't bother. I mean, go back home and pray about it. <laughs> Probably the best thing we can do. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you can have that discussion and you can get along when you have that discussion, uh, do it. It would be a good, good thing to, to try. But don't let yourself get into trouble. Yeah, too many ifs. That's right. Yeah. Any thoughts, comments? Yes, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And, and and here's something else. Here's something else. You can't lie. You can't lie. All right. Don't make something up. I'm going to head for the hills. <laughs> Father, we are grateful to you that you have given us um, the privilege of uh, this relationship. And uh, we confess to you, Lord, that we are, uh, we are sinners saved by grace. And it amazes us um, that you choose to use marriage as 
the example of what you desire for your church as the bride. Uh, Lord, uh, give to us um, opportunities uh, to be able to uh, care for one another, uh, to work toward each other, and in doing so, to honor you in the process. Uh, give us the ability to forbear and to uh, love as you would love, and thereby to bring you that much more honor and glory, for we ask in Jesus' name.